It's interesting that the price of the regular Pixel 8 has gone back to MRP. Well, we're checking out the Pixel 8a and this is launched for 53,000 rupees for the 128 gigabyte variant. And uh, we are checking out the color which is called porcelain. So you've got a green, a blue, a white, and a black. So black is called obsidian, green is called aloe, and blue is called bay, and they've used that name before. What we are looking at is a sort of a cheaper version of the Pixel, and the one thing that is categorically bigger are the bezels, and they're not even symmetrical. You have a bigger chin, and you have really chunky bezels on all sides. And this is a little bit of a letdown. The display in itself is uh, pretty good. We've got a uh, 2000 nits peak brightness on this display. It's a 1080p display. So resolution wise, it's not the greatest, but uh, we've got 120 hertz of refresh rate and 2000 nits of peak brightness. And we also have Gorilla Glass 3 for scratch prevention. We've got a 100% aluminum or aluminum body along with this frame at the back. And this is a composite material. So it's almost like a plastic and it's completely matte. So no fingerprints and it looks really nice. It almost looks like it's out of focus when you look at it with your actual eyes. But but it's flat, so it looks like that because of that. As far as thickness is concerned, it's not the thinnest phone. It's about nine millimeters in terms of thickness, and it weighs in at about 188 grams. So it's fairly lightweight, and because of the plastic or composite back, it feels even lighter. It almost feels like it's missing a battery, which is a 4500 or 4400 actual battery in there. It also supports 18 watts of charging. They call it fast charging, but it has 18 watts of charging. I mean. The iPhone has fast charging and it only supports 22 watts of fast charging. So this is 18 watts. And uh, this also has wireless charging at 7.5 watts. So that's all good. It also has an IP67, which is better than an IP64, but it's not an IP68. So some pros and cons, but at a 50,000 rupee price bracket, it still feels like it's a little overpriced for some of the features that it offers, but we'll get into all of those things in just a second. If you just compare it to an iPhone, you're already getting like a 120 Hertz display out of the box, which the iPhone doesn't have. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about uh, the specifications. Inside, you've got a Tensor G3 and a Titan M2 security co-processor. And everything relies upon uh, Android's specific pixel calibration. So you've got a lot of nice pixel AI features, especially in the camera, you've got tons of camera features, uh, whether you take night low light photography, uh, whether you're taking long exposure, uh, whether you're taking selfies, so it can automatically pick out the best picture in your selfies. So all of those features are built in and you've seen those in the past on the Pixel devices. So all those things are great, obviously. So as far as the cameras are concerned, we've got a 64 megapixel main camera and a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera. And uh, you can shoot 4K 60 FPS video on uh, the main cameras. And then on the front, you do have a 13 megapixel front camera, which is in this punch hole over here. And this does 4K at 30 FPS. Now you get tons of AI features in your photography and you also get image processing on the cloud, along with video processing on the cloud. So you can get things like stabilization and improvements in your video in post after you've uploaded it to the cloud and the cloud will process and download back onto your device, giving you a better output overall. Even if you don't have steady hands like me, you can get a really good video output from this. So as far as connectivity is concerned, we've got two SIM cards. One is a standard nano SIM and one will be an eSIM. And of course you do have a fingerprint sensor, which is over here, fairly fast and responsive. We've got Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.3. And uh, the USB port at the bottom here is a USB 3.2. So it's a newer gen 3.2 port. So you'll get faster access through that in case you want to transfer some images, data or video. What is concerning is the price. So I remember that certain sales, you could pick up an iPhone 15 at around 55, 54,000 rupees. And then you have devices like the Nothing Phone 2, which has a pretty good spec sheet along with feature set, uh, along with these lights, if you like those, uh, for a much more affordable price. In fact, before this phone was launching, people were picking up the Pixel 8 for under 60,000 rupees. And this phone uh, with the 256 gigabyte variant is exactly 60,000 rupees. I mean, you can get some offers and deals, but if you just look at the MRP uh, for just a few thousand rupees more, you were getting the Pixel 8, which is supposedly the bigger brother of this device. And that would have been a better deal. I'm sure the prices will come down, but as of now, this seems a little bit pricey, but we are gonna be putting it through its paces. 
and we're going to be testing the cameras in depth in comparison. So if you want us to test it against any other device, uh, let us know in the comments below. And uh, what are your thoughts on the Pixel 8a and its pricing in India? Let us know below and I'll see you guys in the next one.